Hi everyone. Today we are going to continue to work on our marketing campaigns. So, so far with our integrated marketing campaigns, the sections that we completed were our product, so description of the product or the company along with a SWOT analysis. We identified our target market and segmented the market. We identified measurable goals and objectives by creating SMART goals. Um, and in the last section, 23.3, we developed our message and selected our promotional mix. Now what we are going to do is we are going to figure out um, a way to implement the campaign by creating an action plan. And we're also going to be establishing a budget for our campaign. So the notes today are going to be very short um, because there's only two slides that we're going to be completing. So the first slide that we're going to be completing is the budget. So it's very important when you're creating an integrated marketing campaign and you're presenting it to um, prospective um, brand managers um, that will be implementing the campaign, you want to make sure that they know exactly how much it's going to cost in order to implement the campaign. And so we need to create a budget. In order to create a budget, you need to look at all of the elements that you included in your promotional mix and determine how much it's going to cost. So for example, if one of the elements that you chose was a television commercial, you need to take into consideration the cost to create the ad, like how much it's going to cost to record it, to pay actors, etc., and then how much it's going to cost to run the ad on television. This information, um, you should try to use the internet to do some research in order to figure out what it may cost. Now, this is obviously just going to be um, ballpark, but this is an example of what your campaign budget might look like. When you create this budget, you need to make sure that each of the elements in your promotional mix are covered, and you should include a link to your research to back up the amounts that you are assuming that each element would cost. Um, so you can see here, there's um, a budget for the print media, television commercials, ad on the radio. Um, these should all be indicated um, on your budget. So that everyone knows exactly how much it's going to cost to implement this campaign. You also need to create a timeline. So when you're creating a timeline, you should list each activity, say when it starts, where it happens, an end date, and a person responsible. For you guys, if you have, I know this is fictitious, so you can name um, people who are implementing the campaign just by saying employee number one or employee number two. And you can have, um, you can use your own judgment how to set this up. This is just going to be um, kind of based off of your campaign. So you can see here how this person did it. They list the different elements of the campaign and then they just color coded it uh, week by week when they would be implementing those different things. So banner ads, you're, they're saying, okay, we're going to create a new banner ad that's going to be implemented week one, week three, and then week five. If you are utilizing social media, you should think about um, what posts you are going to be posting, when they're going to be posted, and who is going to be posting them, or the television commercial. Who's in charge of producing it? Who's in charge of um, making sure that it goes on air with the television shows that we would like it to go um, on or to air with, okay? So this timeline, like I said, is going to list each activity. It's going to say where it happens, an end date, the person responsible. But most importantly, the timeline should not exceed 45 days. We need to have a checkpoint in order to make sure that we are um, successful, and we will talk about that in our next section, which is metrics.